Okay, y'all. So it is June 14th. It's been a few days since we did the unboxing. And I realized I never read the card to you guys. I was so distracted by being outside and talking louder than my air conditioner. I never read the card. So we're going to do an all-inclusive demonstration today, including card reading, talking about prices, and demonstrating the products inside the June Watercolor Snacks Art Snacks Watercolor Box. Keep watching. <laughs> Let's begin by reading the menu. Here's what's on the menu for summer 2018 watercolor snacks box. Staff favorite Kuretake Gansai Tambi watercolor set. Set of 24, retail 33.33. Experience the art of traditional watercolor painting with a Kuretake Gansai Tambi watercolor set. These handcrafted professional grade watercolor paints have a highly blendable and smooth consistency. The intense colors are more opaque than European and American watercolors, so try them out on both light and dark paper. Another awesome feature of this set, you can easily create swatches of your new paints by filling in the color chart on the underside of the box lid. So I have reviewed uh, Gensai Tambi watercolors here and over on the blog and um, they are typically used for edigami style painting and I am currently working on this big overarching blog post about the differences between Chinese, Japanese, Korean, and Vietnamese watercolor traditions. So um, yeah, Gensai is kind of a traditional watercolor but it's actually, let me pull up my notes because these are fresh for me. So they are actually sort of a ready-made version of Suigo, S-U-I-E-G-O-U, -E and those are made from fine pigments and dyes combined with chalk. So this is sort of a more um, convenient way of doing that. And Sadie Saves the Day has a lot of excellent information about Gensai Tambi. Um, Especially, well, okay, so Gensai Tambi is a brand name. Kuratake makes Gensai Tambi. Gensai refers to the pre-made watercolor. Other brands do make Gensai watercolors. I've taken a look at Kisho Gensai, and Akashia also makes a Gensai palette. So um, Gansai refers to these types of paint, which have um, the binder is much different than what we think of as American watercolors or Western watercolors or European watercolors. The binder is more of an animal glue mixed with like alum. So it behaves very differently from Ameri uh, Western watercolors. You can use them to do Western watercolor techniques, but they really are designed for another type of watercolor entirely. And they really, truly shine there. Sorry, sorry. Uh, new to art snacks, Arches Cold Press Watercolor Pad, 9 by 12, retail $22.90. Enjoy the warm weather and take your watercolors outside this summer. The Arches Cold Press Watercolor Pan is excellent for plain air painting and convenient for travel. A longtime favorite of artists, this pad features 12 sheets of natural white, 140 pound, 100% cotton paper, waiting to be filled with your creations. Don't be afraid to layer on the layer on the color. The paper is strong enough to handle multiple washes of paint. Manufactured in the same French paper mill since 1492, Arches has performed perfected the art of paper making. Sorry about that. So, you know, I always got things to say. What's interesting is they sent us a pad of watercolor paper, and I like Arches a lot, but they didn't send us a block, but they encourage us to do plein air painting. Blocks, which are bound on at least two sides, often three or four, those will hold the paper tight while you paint so there's no need to stretch. They're a little more of, I, would, I feel like they're more portable because they handle that for me and they keep everything in one place. I don't have to bring clips. I don't have to bring tape with me. Whereas unstretched watercolor paper, especially something like 140 pound, if you work with heavily with water, it may buckle, it may cockle, especially outside where the drying conditions are something you can't control. If it's dry and um, very hot, it's going to dry quick and it's going to dry unevenly and it's going to cockle. So for plain air painting, I would not recommend a pad of watercolor paper. I would recommend a block. Also, Arches is having, people in general really love Arches. Arches is well loved. It's got a long history, but there's a lot of controversy going on right now about the quality 
of Arch's paper. There's a lot of inconsistency. Um, there's areas that kind of create a resist and won't absorb the water. So I'm excited to see Arch's in the box, obviously. But um, tone the hype train. I know they have to hype, but like... I'm here to be the Debbie Downer and point out the flaws in the products, I guess. That's that's my job. So, but I really do like arches. I've painted on arches for a long time and I love doing standalone illustrations on arches. What I think is weird is the combination of Gansai Tombi, which is traditionally painted on washi paper um, with the arches cotton rag. I think, yeah, I did a field test years ago um, on Anch Arch's rough press cotton rag paper with the my larger 36 color Gansai Tombi set and I wasn't that happy with it. I felt like it lifted a lot. I also handled them like Western watercolors and if you use washi paper, then you need to kind of modify your techniques and they behave I like them a lot better on washi paper. In fact, you guys can check out, I have like three or four videos where I do edagame wash, uh, watercolors on Akashi Asai washi paper. I can actually show you guys this. I do three or four videos on this kind of paper. And when I was in Japan, I bought a lot of edagame paper because I really enjoy doing edagame postcards. Um, so I'm kind of surprised they didn't include edagame paper since they're including, or, or washi paper since they're including Gansai watercolors. Um, I know that these are very popular among crafters because they're very affordable and you get a lot of paint for like kind of limited layering techniques. So maybe that was the thought process. I don't know, I'm excited to see both. I'm just confused to see them in the same box. All right, next is our Escoda Prado Tame Synthetic Paintbrush. And in the unboxing, I said I didn't know if it was a synthetic or a natural hair fiber. Um, Art Snacks seems really fond of their synthetic brushes. I'm not really sure why. It might be a personal preference from one of the artists they consult. Escoda Prado, Escoda Prado Tame Synthetic Paintbrush, retail $16.29. Like I said in the other video, I would never pay that much for a synthetic brush. And Escoda makes beautiful natural hair brushes. Maybe it's an ethical thing. Maybe they are not into using animal fibers. But then um, they included a Kalinsky sable brush from Princeton in the October 2016. It's going to it's gonna bother me now. Uh, from its burgundy lacquered wood handle to its perfect blend of synthetic fibers, the Escoda Prado, Escoda Prado Tame Synthetic Paintbrush is truly a work of art. Escoda has a tradition of fine brush making that goes back more than 70 years. Each paintbrush is handcrafted using unique methods of production, which result in a long-lasting, high-performance brushes. The Prado features synthetic fibers that closely match the performance of sable hair, imitating its color spring and liquid absorption. Try it out on your new Arches watercolor pa pad to experience precise and controlled brush strokes. I am kind of looking forward to that. For me, I have found that there is no nothing new under the sun. I have not particularly found a watercolor uh, synthetic that I really, really love. The closest I've come are the black, the mimic brushes. Those are pretty dang good. I like them in larger sizes. They have a little bit of um, like variation to how the hair fibers are. So um, they, they just hold water better. But in general, ooh, that's a really cheap one. I don't want to show you guys that. Do I only have really cheap ones that are clean? I might only have really cheap brushes that are clean right now. This is a very old, very battered Princeton Neptune, and it's got a blunt cut. This is like the bowl cut of the brush world, right? In general, though, um, most synthetic brushes have very, very straight fibers. This is a Neo Sable by Pentel. They have very, very straight fibers. Um, there's nothing for the water to cling to. They don't really have much of a belly. Actually, the Black Swan, the Neptune, sorry, Neptune brushes had a decent amount of belly on them now that I'm looking at them. I think that's why I like them at the time. But this Escoda has no belly at all. It's straight up and down. It's got no curves. And while, you know, there's beauty in all forms, when I'm looking for watercolor brushes, I want that belly. Winsor & Newton watercolor marker. 
Now this, they only sent one in this box. And when chatting with some other art nerds, we kind of theorized that, um, cause they've included these in several art snacks boxes. We're kind of theorizing that they're clearing out their stock. Cause this is also the only Winsor & Newton product in this box. Cue the waterworks. The Winsor & Newton watercolor marker will, oh, $5.99 will amaze you with its highly pigmented, light, fast color, and stunning precision. The double in This double-ended marker allows artists to achieve unbeatable definition and control with watercolors. Simply blend your strokes with water to create soft and vibrant watercolor washes. Use it with the Kuretake Medium Tip Water Brush for easy application and convenient on-the-go painting. I've reviewed these several times. I've reviewed a lot of watercolor markers. These are the only ones I know of in the American market that are pigmented, that don't use dye they're pigmented which has its own complications and if you guys check out those reviews you will see what they are but basically the brush tip will definitely deliver a lot more color more saturated color than the bullet nib and the bullet bullet nib is very prone to dying just dying and the other end works fine I don't use bullet nibs that often anyway so I don't really care about it dying but I know some of you guys probably do finally the Kuretake Medium Tip Water Brush, retail $7.50. And honestly, I find these, they're more expensive when I buy them. I buy the off-brand ones now because I can't find these at the price they're saying. $7.50 is not bad though. I usually will pay nine if I'm buying them in a brick and mortar. Paint anywhere, anytime with the Kuretake Medium Tip Water Brush. By softly squeezing the brush's body, you can control how much water is released directly through the synthetic brush tip. Try blending with your new Kuretake Gansai Tombi watercolor paints to create natural smooth gradients of color. Simply fill the barrel with water and give it a light squeeze to get the liquid flowing. So this is another thing that puzzles me. Water brushes and Gansai watercolors go hand in hand. They are very much the medium of um, edigame uh, postcards. Why didn't they include a couple sheets of edigame paper? Not even like a whole pack, just like a couple. I mean, it's cool to use art supplies however they inspire you, but it's also really cool to learn about other existing traditions and see if there's something about that that inspires you as well. And I am totally biased because like I said, I am working on a long but very interesting to me blog post about um, different watercolor traditions, different non-Western watercolor traditions because that's where my work has its roots is non-Western art. So. Finally, we get an Art Snacks exclusive Watercolor Snacks tutorial tutorial by Jess Ingle of Studio Jess. Retail $15. Not sure how to use the products in your box? Or maybe you need some, I think this is the same, and it doesn't even say anything about what the tutorial is. Um, it's probably a different tutorial, but it's the same copy. Um, I'll read it for you guys. Um, I was hoping it would explain what was in that video. To be quite honest, I was somewhat disappointed in the last tutorial video they did um but maybe i'm biased because i want very specific things in my tutorials and when i do tutorials i try to fill those niches so not every tutorial is great for everyone we don't all learn the same way so maybe it was just me um, not sure how to use the products in your box, or maybe you're in need of some extra inspiration to create a watercolor masterpiece watercolor snacks brings you a full tutorial I would not say the like it's they're short too. The last one was like I want to say 15 minutes. I would not call that a full tutorial. A full tutorial and project video. See, and they're also combined into one. And I think they're counting tutorial as like demonstrating very basic watercolor techniques that are all over YouTube. Um Hosted by a notable artist and illustrator, Jess Engel of Studio Jess. Widely known for her whimsical watercolor videos, Jess breaks down the basics of how to get the product of how to use the products in your box, as well as guides you through the bleh, through creating your own watercolor piece. And then they provide information on how to access it. And then last box, um, I couldn't access it because it wasn't where they said it would be. Because if you are not currently subscribed they remove your oh reminding me i need to unsubscribe from watercolor snacks because i said this was going to be my last box it's a good box i'm happy with it and um i would be pleased to get more boxes of this caliber it's just not something i can sustainably continue to review and then they want you to share the um unboxing with the hashtag and that never works for me so on the other like 
yeah, it just doesn't, never works for me. Um, on the other side, they explain brushes, which will be really interesting for me. Again, every artist comes to this sort of stuff with their own preferences and what works for their art. And I do illustration that um, is very figurative and very cartoony. Like this is a recent one. I actually finished this last night and I will often use ink work in my illustrations. So um, I, I recognize that like my needs are not everyone else's needs. When selecting the perfect watercolor brush, keep these features in mind. Capacity, the amount of water and or pigment a brush can hold. This depends on the bristle material and size. Point, how well the brush comes to a crisp point when wet and holds that point during use. And I will give synthetics this. Um, natural hair brushes get worn down over time. They get beaten up over time. They start to fray. In fact, I'll grab, grab one. Okay, this is like a eight-year-old Winsor Newton sable, all right? It's dry. Now it's wet. It's got some stray hairs. It's got some fraying. I've got some cats using grinding your nice watercolor brushes against unactivated pigments will tear up your nice brushes. Um, overly rough papers can wear them down over time and synthetics are much more resilient against that. So that is a big plus for synthetics. Snap. The amount of snap a brush has is determined by how quickly the bristles snap back into place after being bent at an angle. That's also something that not all, um, not all natural fibers are capable of. Squirrel has no snap at all. Squirrel is like painting with a mop, um, but it holds a lot of water and pigment. Kalinsky Sable has, in my opinion, like the perfect amount of snap to um, coverage, but it's expensive and it, you know, there's ethical issues that people have with Kalinsky Sable. Um, there's Camel, which is not actually Camel. It's made from pony hair, which I, I hate Camel, so I don't paint with Camel ever. It's a shame because I have a feeling they're probably able to ethically source pony hair pretty easily. Um, and then there's Blends and Princeton, no, Sep Scepter Gold makes a really nice blend. That's like my favorite blend. And Above Ground in Canada, which means I can't get them. Above Ground Art has their own line of brushes that are a good mix of like um, synthetics and natural hair fibers, which holds water well, but has good snap. Spring, how flexible the brush is at different strokes. For example, synthetic bristles tend to keep their full spring even when wet. And then flow release. The rate color flows from the tip of the brush and is released upon the page. A high quality brush, your new Escoda Prado, for example, will have an even consistent flow rate, which results in a steady release onto the paper. We're going to see about that. I have, I like Escoda as a brand, so um, I, I'm going to reserve my judgment. But like synthetics in general, just don't impress me that much. I think they're important. I have a bunch of synthetics. I use synthetics all the time. But if you're only getting one brush in the set, and it's a small one too, well really we're getting a water brush too, but use these differently. I would just rather see a natural hair brush. But overall, I feel like this is a pretty strong brush. I haven't crunched any of the numbers yet. I'm just going with, I'm intensely familiar with every product in this box, except for this brush here. And I'm familiar with other Escoda products. So, um, I feel like we're getting our values worth, but I'm gonna come back at you guys with some numbers in a minute. And I'm gonna use this as an opportunity to remind you guys that if you like the way I move, if you like the way my art looks, and if you like the way I handle my tutorials and you haven't checked out my blog yet, I have a wonderful watercolor basic series. It is designed to help comic artists and illustrators learn how to paint. And I have um, a really nice in-depth exploration of paints, papers, and brushes as part of the early part of the series. So if you're looking for more information and you want free information, um, please head on over to natosoup.blogspot.com and click on the watercolor basics series. Now, for those of you who are new to my channel or who may have forgotten, I'm going to tell you guys how this typically works. I will compare the price listed on the 
menu here with various prices that I find online. I'm checking places like Amazon, I'm checking places like Dick Blick, Jerry's Artorama, etc. I do not check places like Etsy and eBay. I'm not trying to bankrupt the market and I certainly wouldn't use prices from Wish either. So I'm basically going with mass market art supply competitors that most people have access to. Most art savvy shoppers will at least check those places to see if they're getting a competitive price. We're not going by whether the box is worth it via MSRP. We're going by whether or not if you went out and bought the supplies in this box elsewhere, whether or not you're getting fleeced or whether or not you're getting a fair deal. And um, depending on the type of box, I think I used to give a, a $5 standard deviation to the $20 art snacks. So I haven't quite decided what my standard deviation for watercolor snacks is since it's obviously a more expensive box but that's kind of where I'm coming from. I buy these boxes out of pocket, either using money I've earned from doing conventions as an artist or money earned from my Patreon. So this is not sent to me. I can say whatever I wish because I am a customer so long as it isn't liable. So um, if there are hurt feelings, I am sorry that feelings are hurt, but I'm not gunning for anybody. I just wanna give the best review possible. I also link all of the sources I can in the description below. Um, if in case you guys like what you see, you want to buy your own, um, or in case you're going to put together your own watercolor snacks experience and you don't necessarily want to pay for watercolor snacks. So there are links to the description, or in case you think I'm lying and you want to double check, because uh, I got nothing to hide here. I'm happy to do that for you guys, happy to help you out however I can. I think I'm going to do something a little bit different today. Now, normally when I do these price breakdowns, I just go with the lowest price. I don't take shipping into consideration whatsoever. This time I'm finding very, very affordable prices on both Blick and Amazon. So I think I am going to stick with just one. I'm just gonna go with Amazon. And the reason I'm doing that for the total, the reason I'm doing that is because the Kuratake Brush 2O, I couldn't find it on Blick. I can only find it on Amazon. And for you guys, I wanna stick with just one mailer. But I am gonna go over the prices for both. I just want y'all to keep in mind that the grand total is coming from Amazon. Are you guys ready to talk prices? I'm ready to talk prices. All right, so for the Kuratake Gensai Tambi watercolor set, retails for $33.33. You can get it on Blick for $24.97 or on Amazon for $22.44 with free prime shipping. I don't know about y'all, but I am a prime member. For the Arches watercolor pad, this retails for $22.90. You can get it for $11.45 on Blick or $15.77 with free prime shipping. The Escoda Prado Tame Synthetic Paintbrush, which is good for oil, acrylic, and watercolor, so it's an all-rounder as synthetic brushes tend to be, retails for $16.29. You can get it on Blick for $8.67 or on Amazon for $15.70 with prime shipping. And I should note, this is through the Escoda seller on Amazon. This is through the Canson seller on Amazon. And this is through the Kuratake seller on Amazon. So we're not getting them from really weird third party sources. We're getting them from the legitimate uh, source for these products through Amazon. For the Windsor & Newton watercolor marker, you it retails for $5.99. You can get it for $3.59 on Blick. You can get the set of 12 on Amazon for $35.67, which is a pretty good deal. Or you can get it open stock for $4.19 plus $3.15 shipping. There was no prime shipping available on this. Finally, the Kuretake Medium Tip Water Brush retails for $7.50 is going for $6 on Amazon with free prime shipping. The tutorial by Jess Ingle, they recommend a $15 value. Um, I'm not going to argue that. Everybody deserves to get their bite. Everybody deserves to get their cut. Every artist deserves to get paid for the work that they do. So I would never argue, even if I don't care for it or even if I love it, I would never argue the value of something like that. So the total for Art Snacks is $93.51. That's the retail totals, retail numbers they've given me. The value I found, and these are all Amazon prices, including the shipping that I mentioned, but everything else was prime shipping, is $76.25, and that includes the tutorial as part of it. 
So um, I know you can't get the tutorial anywhere else but through Art Snacks, but again, YouTube is full of wonderful art tutorials, so. That was a shrug, in case you can't tell. The box was 89 with free shipping. So I feel like this box was worth the value, especially if you enjoy Jess Engel's art, if you want her to teach you how to watercolor, if you wanna learn how to watercolor like her, or if you're curious about how she watercolors, then it's definitely worth the value because I don't think you can get the tutorial she's doing for watercolor snacks anywhere else. I know she does other tutorials online, but I don't think you can get the watercolor snacks ones without the subscription. So if you want that, then it's worth your money. If you don't care about that tutorial, if you just wanna know what the products would cost, you can get them all for $61.25 through Amazon. And the only one you're gonna have to pay shipping on is this one. And everything else is for is um, free two day shipping. So you could get it like that. And I'm gonna have those links in the description below to help you guys out, especially for those of you who would like to to noodle and noodle along with me. So we are going to get into the unboxing and demonstration portion of our demonstration video. And I think I want to do an edigame postcard with you guys as part of the demonstration because I just, I really like them. I think they're a great art form. I think they're underappreciated. I am all about egalitarian art that anybody can do. So I really want you guys to try them. Um, and you don't have to be great at it, but I would want you to try if you can. Um, the materials can be kind of, get, getting washi paper can be kind of harder. You can't get that on Amazon necessarily. You can get it, and I hate to recommend them. You can get them through JetPens. They're kind of the only consistent seller I found. Um, if you guys have a source for washi paper that is available online, then let me know because I like doing edigame and I want you guys to enjoy doing edigame and I want it to be something we can enjoy together. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna debox. We're gonna debox and take a look. One of the neat things about watercolor snacks is that you, I should have just used a knife. Um, you get the full products for the most part. Now, I'm a little bit disappointed that they're sending like one brush because it's like, well, you can't, I mean, you can use it as like a detail brush, but like, I don't know. I feel like it kind of makes it harder to do a whole illustration, especially when you um, you get a size two, which is very small. It's a detail brush. Something that would have been a little more flexible, but more expensive would have been a size six or a size eight. Those are kind of good all rounders. Do do tish because they're rounds in case. Oh, I'll just ruin the joke. So we're gonna go ahead and read the box. Ah! These are not, as I now remember, they're not adhered to the box in any way, shape or form. Leave it flat for a minute. Apply a water brush with color to activate it. Available in set of 12 colors, 18 colors, 24 colors, and 36 colors. Gantai pans may exhibit uh, cracking due to extreme dryness. However, it does not affect their quality. Occasionally, Gansai pan texture may look rough due to tiny air bubbles, which can occur during production, but does not affect their quality. Please create a color chart by painting the color onto the chart on the back side of the lid. And I already own the 36 color set set to me by my dear friend Heidi, and you can check their art on Instagram by checking out the description below. And I am sending these to my dear friend Kabocha because share the love, right? Pass on the love. I don't need duplicates. I don't need, I have the 36 set. I don't need the 24 as well. No art supply hoarding here, she says and lies, but I am gonna send this over to Kabocha. So thank you so much for, to Electric Abyss, to Heidi, for the original 36 color set. I really appreciate that gift. And I hope you enjoy the 24 color set, Kabocha. Inside is the color chart with the color names in English. We are, um, well, I'll just read the whole thing to you guys. Kuratake, Japanese traditional paint for professional artists and crafters. It can be used as a gouache and watered down to, for use as a watercolor, ideal for sketch, illustration, and more. And we're getting white, black, cadmium scarlet, red, rose matter, rose matter deep, cobalt violet, lemon yellow, cadmium yellow, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, raw umber deep, malachite, sap green light, 
Hooker's Green, Sap Green, Olive Green, Viridian, Turquoise Green Deep, Sap Green Deep, Ultramarine Pale, Turquoise Blue, Ultramarine, and Indigo. And these are intended to be painted thickly, and they're not necessarily intended for a whole lot of mixing because the colors are kind of ready prepared for you. Inside, there is the lid with the color chart, and this one actually has the English names on it. Mine did not, so this is very handy. Mine just had the numbers. I am not going to fill this in. I'm gonna let Kabocha do that. I am, however, going to tape these down because they are gonna go everywhere in transit. So I hope that is a helpful thing for you, Kabocha, and not an intrusive thing for you. Next, we're gonna go ahead and unwrap our arches pad of paper, and this can be a little finicky, so I recommend using a pair of scissors or a knife just to get it going. I really, really love the texture of arches. It's slightly rough. It's, um, it just feels substantial. It feels like you're painting on something nice. And I have painted on a few cotton rag watercolor papers. I am not a new babe in the woods, but I still like arches. Arches is still great. Then we have our water brush here with instructions on how to get it started. And Art Snacks loves sending water brushes. I've gotten like four from them over my various years of subscribing, unsubscribing, subscribing, unsubscribing. Now, you're gonna want to, when you fill, you can remove this little stopper or you can completely submerge the entire thing and squeeze. Um, if you remove the little stopper, then you can fill it from the faucet, but it's helpful to put the little stopper back in because it helps prevent leaking. So that is not a throwaway, that's something you keep. And there is, a, no, there's no sizing in those bristles. Sometimes you get sizing in water brush bristles, sometimes you do not. Then we have our Skoda Prado Sintetico Barcelona. So European, this has sizing in it. So I will wash that out. And then finally, we have the Windsor and Newton watercolor marker. Now, I think I have, I have a blog post on this. I have a blog post and a video on these, and I have many blog posts and videos on this here. So, and I have an upcoming water brush versus traditional brush video coming up as well. So I'm really excited as a reviewer because it's like, oh, I've already talked about these things a lot. I have all these resources to help you guys out. So um, I wish I could say if I've confused anybody, just tell me to stop, just tell me to slow down, but I can't. So what we're gonna do is we are going to do our first set of swatches on the arches and we're gonna do that with the water brush. I'm gonna do this a couple of ways. I'm gonna do a mass tone swatch and then I'm going to do a gradiated swatch with a, so we're gonna swatch each color to see what the colors look like. We're gonna do a mass tone swatch where we're gonna test for opacity. We're gonna do a gradiated swatch to test for other qualities. So apparently it was not recording even though I thought it was recording. My mistake, my apologies. This is where we are so far with the swatching. We're almost halfway through, unfortunately, I'm so sorry. And I realized that I had been discussing several things. So I'm gonna do a really quick recap. So Gansai watercolors are not designed to be handled the same way Western watercolors are. They are thicker than Western watercolors um, and they're more opaque. So when you're doing sort of minimal light washes, that's fine. You're really not gonna notice the problem, which is one of the reasons I think crafters like them so much is they lend themselves really well to that. But when you do something that's a little more layered or um, more detailed, that's when you're going to start noticing that the Gansai style watercolors do not handle like Western watercolors. And that's fine. That's how they are made. They're, they're very different. So what I would like to do is I would like to do a few different demonstrations for how we can handle these watercolors. And that way, you guys, if you decide you want to use these, you can approach it prepared. 
And if you decide you these are not the right fit for your studio, that's great. You have that information as well. So like I said, we're going to do an edigame demonstration and that's going to be on washi paper. Washi paper has some unique handling properties. It's very different from cotton rag or even cellulose watercolor paper. And then we're also probably going to do a couple of different illustrations. I think for best case scenario for something like this with well, a Western style is a very, very light hand, a very light and open illustration. Anyway, other than that goof, the colors are very bright. They're very vivid. There is a lot of brilliance to these colors, especially on the arches paper, but we're really gonna start to see problems when we try to do layers. So I'm gonna continue now where I left off. And I apologize for my goof earlier. I really, really do not like using water brushes on arches. It is very scratchy. It's a little bit like trying to paint on sandpaper, especially for swatch tests like this. And one of the reasons people are kind of excited about Gensai watercolors is because um, you're, there's not really a lot of mixing involved. Most of the colors are already mixed for you, so it's a very immediate painting experience. So if you're somebody who you just want to get to painting, you don't want a whole lot of muss and a whole lot of fuss, and you don't want to deal with color mixing, this could be a really good set for you. Now, my water brush is just about on E, and we are just slightly over halfway through swatching these, so I'm going to go refill it, but that is definitely something you're want to, going to want to keep in mind, is just cleaning your water brush, and I have here a nasty, dirty watercolor rag for that. Just cleaning your watercolor brush really uses a lot of water. You also don't want to pre-activate your Gansai pans the way you would regular Western watercolor pans because they use a different binder and they're very prone to getting soupy, goopy, and soapy. So you kind of want to work with just the amount of water you need and only activate or only add water to the pans that you're actively using. And they activate really quickly. They don't really need like a warm up time the way Western watercolors seem to need. Those of you who are used to painting with say honey based watercolor, it kind of handles something like that. And there are opaque colors or rather there are opaque pastels in a Gansai Tombi set. Like, well, you guys can't see it. So I'll show you guys these two right here. Um, you can also make opaque colors or opaque white pastel colors, etc. by mixing in the white. It's designed for that. Looks like I might have to refill even. Well, we've got one more. We've got white, which you probably will not see in this version anyway, but don't worry, there's some black mixed in there. So those are our basic swatches. We've got a mass tone and a gradiated swatch. Right now they are super brilliant, very beautiful, very colorful colors, rich in color, rich in pigment. Next, I'm going to swatch the one Winsor & Newton watercolor marker that was included in this box. It doesn't really make a lot of sense to me, but we'll go for it. So I have other videos and other demonstrations where I talk about these. We're going to swatch both ends and I will zoom it zoom all up on its grill. So one of the problems I've noticed with these markers is that if you do a direct application, blending out can be kind of a challenge because it's already, even if you're working wet into wet, because it's already kind of had a chance to seep into the fibers. So doing good with the brush tip. You guys can probably see the bullet tip does leave a faint line. And this actually varies marker to marker. Um, some of the colors will blend out a little more easily than others. And I have a list of the ones I've tested at natosuit.blogspot.com. I can put a link in the cards for you guys. So 
I am scribbling. You guys can't see it, but I scribbled a little bit of the marker onto my uh, silicone craft sheet. And I'm just going to pick it up. I like using it as a palette. This is my preferred way of using the markers if I need to blend things out. But it makes it very similar to kind of just traditional watercolors, I guess. So I can see why that method would not be appealing to people. So I'm gonna let this nice large swatch sheet dry. And then off camera, I'm going to do my opacity test and I'll check back in with you guys when I have that finished so you guys can see it. So I just finished doing my opacity swatching. I cheated a little bit. I could not bear the thought of doing another 24 swatches with the water brush. So I switched over to a flat synthetic. It's just a cotton and a glass of water because it's just so much faster that way. So I'm going to let these dry and then we're gonna have a little chat. All right, so I've got everything swatched. We have the original color swatches here. Whoosh. And we've got the opacity swatches here. Let me move that. And I'll go over the colors with you guys. Cadmium Scarlet, Red, Rose Matter. Wait, no. Dang it, see, they're not in order. Okay, fine. We'll do it the slow way. Red, by matching them up, Rose Matter. So that's 36. Rose Matter Deep, and that's 31. So where are you? Cadmium Scarlet, 43. Cadmium Yellow. Okay, lemon yellow, yellow ochre. They're like, what? Why wouldn't you, why would you list them out of order and then not have, actually, I know what will have it done with this. Finished, done with that. Done with getting confused. Ha-cha-cha. -cha. Okay, again, red, rose matter, rose matter deep, cadmium scarlet, cadmium yellow, lemon yellow, yellow ochre, olive green, sap green light, sap green, hooker's green, sap green deep, viridian, turquoise green deep, malachite, ultra, yeah, ultramarine pale, ultramarine, turquoise blue, indigo, cobalt violet, burnt sienna, raw umber deep, black and white. So that is all 24 of the Kurotake Gensai Tombi watercolors that were sent in our art snacks. Let's see now, the only thing that's really left to explore, the only thing that's really been neglected is this kind of weenie Escoda Prada, Prado brush. And I hate to start a new piece of arches just to noodle around with like one tiny brush. So, hmm. I'll be really cheap and grab a cellulose paper since we're just testing out this brush handles anyway. It's not too big of a deal. Another problem with the watercolor snacks is every, the format of everything is kind of big so I don't really have room for it. Okay, so we are, got our Gansai Tambi, we've got our Prado. I assume this is mostly just to add fine details to the water brush. I mean, it's got good snap, and if you're gonna do a synthetic I like having them in the smaller sizes because they're really good for pulling tight detail and I like them in the really large expensive sizes because they're less, they're more affordable than their natural hair counterparts. 
Another thing I'm curious about is why did they send us an Escoda Prado? Why didn't they send us like a Sumi brush or like a Kuratake Menso brush? I've talked about those on the channel as well, but they are. I've got, what are you? It might be a Boku Undo brush, but a Menso brush basically looks like this. It's kind of like a fine liner for a Sumi or Sumie um, or Chinese watercolor that sort of stuff. It's to add finer details back in. They're very inexpensive for what you're getting. Um, I feel like they perform pretty comparably to Kalinsky Sable at this was probably $14, maybe. You can get them in slightly larger sizes like this, but I really prefer the finer ones personally. And I need to condition mine because mine are looking kind of kind of rough there but they still will pull a really nice point once they're wet so like why did they include the Escoda brush which is fine but like I feel like it kind of well I felt like that and the arches kind of just don't really fit with the watercolors so I am happier with this box, but it does feel a little disjointed now that I kind of had a chance to look at all of the everything included, like the Windsor & Newton brush, or I'm sorry, the Windsor & Newton um, watercolor marker. It feels like it was just thrown in to pad out the box. So what I guess I'm most curious about is I still don't really understand where watercolors where Art Snacks is coming from with the watercolor box. It's clear they pulled someone who's more familiar or familiar with watercolor on to work on the project, but are we building a comprehensive studio? Is that what the subscription is all about? That they're sending you supplies and in two years you'll have like a really nice comprehensive watercolor studio and you can handle a variety of watercolors? Are they trying to introduce us to new products? Or are they trying to introduce us to products that look really nice on YouTube and seem like a really fleshed out box, but when you pull it all together, they don't necessarily feel cohesive. I would not say this brush holds very much water. It's got kind of a pathetic little belly on it. So my original question from the last box, who is this, who is the intended audience? Who is this box for? That still stands. I feel like it still hasn't been answered. This box is a lot more cohesive than the last box. Off the top of my head, I can't even remember what was in the last box, which isn't good. <laughs> now that I think about that, that's not a good thing that I can't remember what was in it. Windsor Newton paper, but what was the, oh, core watercolor. All that said, I still feel like I would like to know who the intended audience is for because I think that makes the difference between someone purchasing a year subscription of watercolor snacks and somebody purchasing one box. And if they have answered that question and I've missed it, let me know in the comments below. I can't be everywhere at once and I never directly asked it. I've only asked it here on this channel. So maybe I ought to actually ask their Twitter since it is something I'm really curious about. I guess I haven't because I also feel like I'm going to get kind of a roundabout answer. But that's not really a good reason not to give them a chance to answer a customer's question. So before we go, and I hate to use a whole 9 by 12 sheet of art. I'm being cheap right now. Before we go, I'm going to demonstrate, hopefully in a way that will come across because I'm kind of having trouble coming doing that. I'm going to demonstrate on the arches paper how these watercolors handle when you've layered them pretty thickly. And I'm going to use a variety of brushes. Oh, I've already marred the beautiful paper surface with a water drip. So we're going to start with that synthetic cotton. And I'm gonna start by just kind of, I'm not painting anything in particular, I'm just getting color on the page. 
That's another thing. Arches watercolor papers are really thirsty. A really thirsty paper. Um, so synthetics and water brushes are not necessarily the best fit for it. So what we're going to do is we're basically going to do kind of a three layer test. And I hopefully will be able to demonstrate what I've seen firsthand where the colors go kind of muddy with layers. And that doesn't, again, that doesn't mean these are not well manufactured quality watercolors. It means they're designed for a different use case. They're designed for a different purpose. And Western watercolors don't really mesh well with that. But if you have like a loose style, like I see a lot of people on Instagram right now doing floral illustrations, which are very loose and spontaneous and kind of, um, I'm sure they're planned, but they have kind of like that immediacy to them. I feel like these would be a really good pick for those artists. But that really feels like it's got a tradition in Chinese watercolor and in Sumie, so that would make sense why these would work well for that. I also feel like these are great for brush letterers or anyone who has kind of a light, eerie, open watercolor style, the sort of people who can do what they need to do in one or two layers. And as I said before, and I'll shift this so you guys can maybe see a little bit better, these go on really thick. Now they're designed to go on really thick. They're designed to go on washi paper or rice paper or silk. Honestly, probably not silk. Probably washi paper and rice paper. They're designed for that. They're not designed for necessarily cotton rag watercolor paper. So if you can do what you wanna do in one or two layers, that's great. I don't even know why I'm messing with this. Let me switch this brush out. Let me grab a nice Sumi brush because that's kind of what we're doing anyway. Again, why weren't any Sumi brushes included? They're very inexpensive. Now I do enjoy how these colors are blending on this paper. Um, there's like really nice color play. They're very fluid. They're very quick to move. You can get some really nice color mixes like this is this kind of um, neon color is ooh, it's messing with my color camera's color accuracy too. <laughs> um, it's yellow like a, a cool yellow with like a turquoise blue and it's just like really nice and um, bright and fresh and a little bit fluorescent. And something nice about the arches is it stays open long, like a long time. So it, you have like nice open, you can get a lot of blending going on. It is going to add time to your painting time if you are doing layers. So that's just something to kind of keep in mind, kind of plan around. So we're letting my colors mix on the paper. I don't want to go with too many layers or too much on the paper right now because I am going to go over this with another couple layers. And honestly, maybe it won't be an issue on this Arches paper. It was an issue on the Arches paper I used in the past, but things change, formulas change, and maybe I've changed. But I think it's because these go on thicker than Western watercolors. That's how they're designed. And I think it's because they go on more opaque than Western, Western watercolors, which is also how they're designed. All right, we're going to let this layer dry and then we're going to come back to it. Um, you probably can't see it. and I don't want to lift this up, but the paper is cockling a little bit just from all the water in it. That's why I mentioned earlier on in this demonstration that um, this would not be my pick for plain air field work, not at this size and not in this format. All right, art nerds, this has had plenty of time to dry. So I'm going to go ahead and give it another layer. And I should probably go change out my cup of water because it is pretty gross. So this has had plenty of time to dry. I've got myself a fresh cup of water. And the colors are still really nice and vivid. Let's see if we can't ruin that. So far on this paper, everything seems to be kind of holding steady. 
not a lot of color movement, not a lot of color migration. And also the colors are remaining pretty vibrant. Also getting some nice wet into wet flowing and blooming there. Now, when you layer opaque colors over more translucent colors, you are definitely going to end up with some muddy color effects. But you can also end up with some really neat effects as well. Interesting blooms. All right, I think that's a good second layer. Everything so far remains vivid and brilliant some really nice glazing going on. We'll see if it still looks that nice and bright after it's dried. All right, so this has had a chance to dry. It's still fairly cool to the touch, which means there are still some water in the fibers, but I'm going to go ahead and do my next layer on top of it. And part of the, that reason is when I'm watercoloring, I don't always wait until it's bone dry. In fact, I don't have the luxury of that kind of time. So this is kind of more realistic to how I paint than anything else. So I'll do something a little more figurative. And I'm really just kind of testing to see if anything's going to lift up, if anything's going to reactivate. They're certainly a little duller than they were when they went down, but they're not lifting nearly as badly as I remember. Now something that does muddy up the colors significantly is when we start using the opaque colors, which dry um, not quite as opaque as you would hope. So they don't dry this opaque. They dry much more muted. And then you kind of just end up with like a muddy overglaze. Now, to be fair, you shouldn't be glazing over with opaques like this generally. That's generally going to lead to more muddy colors. You should really kind of try to save those for adding details at the end. Yeah, I don't know. The artist is doing a really good job holding on to this color. So this really makes me want to try doing a Western style watercolor in the style that I normally work for Kara stuff. Just to see where I went wrong, I guess, to see what's changed. Maybe I've changed. So. This is the end of our Watercolor Snacks summer demonstration. I hope it was useful, helpful, and informative for you guys. I am not a super huge fan of the choice of brushes. I really do think they should have included at least one Sumi brush. Um, but I am very pleased with how the Arches is working with the Kuratake against Saitambi, and it's kind of opened my eyes to the possibility of trying this sort of combination again. I have other Gansai videos here on this channel with more to come. I took a look at the Maz Art Como Rebi watercolor, so I highly recommend you guys check that out. I've also reviewed the Kuratake Gansai Tambi in the past, and I've done several videos where we do edigami paintings, and I have another one for you guys where I'll show you guys how to paint this using this very set. So I hope you guys will stick around, consider subscribing. I can't wait to see you guys for some of the field tests I have planned for this watercolor set. Thank you guys so much for joining me. It's been a pleasure as always, and I look forward to seeing you guys again soon. I will check back in with you guys one more time once this is dried, because right now the colors are really nice and fresh and vibrant, but we know it never really dries like that. So I'll check in with you guys when this is dried to say my final goodbyes. So this has had a chance to dry. As you guys can see, it's much duller, more um, subtle, blends in with the very messy, very loud background. I was very impressed to see that my re-experience with Gansai Tambi as a Western style watercolor did not have the flaws I noticed in the first go round. I am really looking forward to experimenting with it with more Western techniques and playing around with it. And I 
I'm kind of excited for the upcoming field test. I've already got one that's already kind of recorded and finished, and that is the Edigame style field test. And worked quite well for that, but that's kind of what it's designed for. So I'm looking forward to seeing how it reacts to my kind of tortured, laborious watercolor style. I have a very heavy handed over rendered watercolor style. I'm looking forward to seeing how it handles that. And I'm also going to try something that's a bit of a hybrid, something that's a little bit more, um, um, a little more spontaneous. So I hope you guys are looking forward to those videos. I look forward to seeing you guys again really soon. As always, it was a pleasure. Bye guys.